What up, y'all? I'm Rajay. And I'm Shy, and welcome to the RXS Podcast. The podcast where we provide inspiration, motivation, and information to the music community. Let's go. Yo. So, babe, what are we talking about today? We are actually talking to a young lady. Okay. Who's an amazing musician. Okay. And um, I'm a big fan of hers. Uh-huh. So, I think this is going to be really cool. Sounds but but I want to throw a curveball in today's episode. Huh? Before we shoot to my conversation with her, I want to ask you a question. Okay. Um, what was it like being a? I don't know if the word would be popular or influential or um, well known female quartet artists with a lot of men around Mm. what was that like it was uh it was different it was very um sometimes it was a good thing sometimes it was a weird thing okay explain okay the good reason is because you meet a lot of people you jail with a lot of people, which automatically sometimes grants protection. Oh, I like it. Yeah. So, like, you go to different places. You don't have to worry about anything happening to you or anybody coming at you any kind of way. Because you got some dudes that's ready to rock and roll. Yes. Like, I got you. you got some people that treat you like family, yeah. like, really embrace you and protect you. Yeah. yeah like for real for real like it's one person in particular i'm not gonna say his for name real. yeah i just thought about it he don't play but he'd he be like hey he, hey he ready to roll right now will not play about yeah, he, miracle okay? yeah about miracle he'll shut it down he'll shut it down <laughs> over miracle that is the truth real quick okay, okay so now what is the downside of it the flip side of it is especially being young You deal with guys that, you know, like you. Okay. And what I mean by like you, romantically. So, like. Is it romantic? It's not really romantic, but that's just like. You mean lustfully? Of saying. Lustfully. Lustfully, yes. Is it. I I told you I was going to throw a curveball. Yeah. Talk about it. Well. It's weird because like the attention sometimes feels okay, but when it gets to a place where people feel like they're stalkers, Mm. it's different. So you've gotten to the place where it was uncomfortable before. Oh yeah. Like one person in particular, I was real young and they had to be in their like twenties, late Uh twenties. And um, it started to become scary because every time we went to a particular state and city, they were there and they would like kind of creep me out. And then oh, wow. I'll be like, uh, did you tell anybody? Mm-mm. Why not? Because like to me, it wasn't I was nervous to say anything because for one, I had two people that will probably really hurt this person. Okay. 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 So I didn't, I didn't want to cause problems because he didn't really cause a problem to me. Yeah. But it was just weird. weird the, energy. the energy was weird. It was just weird energy. So yeah, I didn't say anything to anybody, but me ignoring him every time he started to get the picture, he got the picture. Like, yeah. Of course, people would come. Oh my God, you did so great! Yeah. Oh my God, you sound so wonderful. Do they have to touch you like that? They do. Like they really. That's do. what they be doing. Yeah, and like everybody, especially like the older, older women and stuff. Oh, okay, like cool. That. So that's cool. It's no, yeah, it's no craziness so going on. It's a common thing, though. Like, but you have dealt with men that are kind of out of pocket. Very out of pocket. Very out of pocket. And nine times out of ten, it was older men. Like the younger guys. You don't think they care that you were young? No. That's bad. 
older like, guys the younger the younger guys were too afraid to approach me not afraid of the time. i don't want to say afraid in the sense where like i was grand or anything i wasn't but you can feel when somebody wants to talk to you and just don't timid like nervous timid, nervous they're still a yeah like i was yes exactly you was gonna say that and then you change your mind yes Exactly. That's how I was. But, Ain't gonna lie, but I got the. Hey, y'all. We got. We got, got the nerve. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna tell that story on another <laughs> podcast. Yes. In fact. Yes. So yeah. But um, yeah, like the older guys, they it didn't bother them. They did it. Okay. They didn't do it in like all the way public public eye. If there's a backstage, they'll. If I'm standing backstage, they'll stand beside me. And say weird stuff. Yeah, it was weird. You just messed me up. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, if I'm backstage, in order to everybody's backstage, everybody's backstage, everybody's backstage. So it's not weird if an older gentleman is standing beside me. Yeah, but backstage. it's weird if they talking to you though. Yes, that dude got creepy vibes. So that's the thing. That's what typically happens and transpires, and it's like weird. Yeah. It's really weird. But that's the life. It shouldn't be the life, but I guess it is. It was the life. I mean, I don't know how it is now, but Me neither. But we do have somebody who know how it is. Yes. So we're gonna flip over to that and y'all enjoyed this episode. Peace. What up, y'all? I got my girl Morgan in the mm-hmm. building. What's up? What's up? Gang, gang. So yeah. before we start, I do want to say I am a fan. Appreciate it so much. <laughs> Yo, Morgan is a amazing bass player, but you don't just play bass, do you? Mm-mm. What else you play? Uh, drums. I'm dabbling a little bit on the keys. Not much, <laughs> but we're just going to stay with bass and drums. <laughs> so, mm. look, let's start at the top like we always do. Tell them where you're from. Uh, I'm originally from Fairmont, but I moved to Lumberton a couple years ago. Okay. So. Where in the world is Fairmont? Uh, South of the border. Okay. Okay. You're going to go about 10, 15 minutes up the road. You're right there, right there at it. So ne- so you never lived in South Carolina, but you always lived at the line. Yeah, I migrate back and forth. Just say that. <laughs> across, the, yeah. across the border. That's yeah. what's up. Um, so how long you been playing? I've been playing music since I was probably seven. Playing Ooh. drums. Mm-hmm. So before you started playing, so like, is your family like a musical family? Yes, on both sides. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Mom and dad. They like all play, sing. Yep. My mom actually plays, just say everything too. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. yeah, so what was it like growing up watching her play? Oh, it was very interesting because a lot of times, just say my granddad and my dad would be playing a song. She'd be like, I don't think that's right. <laughs> so she'll pick it up and she'll show them what to do. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. I want to do that. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, um. You finally started playing bass at seven. Mm-hmm. You said uh, no, I played drums, drums at, at seven. seven. I'm sorry, I didn't pick up the bass till I was fifteen, maybe. Okay, so yeah. tell me about the drum journey. What made you want to play drums? Um, okay, let's just say I've been playing quartet since I was two. Thanks, air drums. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can't spirituals. I was able to quote. <laughs> Um, heavily choir at two years old. I knew it word for word. Are you okay? Serious? My mom has it on video. Oh, whoa. so you know, a lot of people just think you know. I just jumped into this when I got old. Like this has no, been my life, just yeah. like all of us out here. Yeah. So you know, it's, it's been, and I'm just 27. Yeah. So, so you air drumming, and then, so how, when did you get your first drum set? Probably, uh. I want to say I was probably about 10, you okay. know, like a Rogers, you know. Ah, that's kind of Yeah. <laughs> so were you like the drummer that was like, were you playing like soft or were you like going crazy? I wanted to be loud. <laughs> and I think that's because I was a girl. I felt like I had to be more powerful than everybody that was in the room. Yeah. So I was, and my dad would have to stay on me like, For real? Morgan, you doing too much. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, what you talking about? Like, I got to do what, you know, like everybody. 
you doing too much. And oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't understand what he was saying until I got older. Yeah. So, thanks, Dad. <laughs> so what does your dad play? My dad plays bass. Okay. Mm-hmm. So was looking at him the reason why you was like, I want to play bass? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Whoa. Yep. My whole family went to the same church, so it was all family bands. So. Oh, that's fire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're like, I'm going to play bass. How old were you? Uh, 15. So runner. was it a long process? Was it easy? Like, was your hands big enough? Um, uh, my dad had a four string that he started me on. Uh huh. So it felt weird at first trying to get used to the high. I didn't understand it at first. I knew how to like find a note. Yeah. Okay, this note. Then this is the next note. Then after a while, you know, I started making. Okay, it's just patterns. Yeah. And then, um. My brother, Robert Whittison Jr., you know, mm-hmm. he plays for the Swannies. Yeah, um, shout out to Swannies. He taught me, like, the number system and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I get it now. It's yeah. easy. So, yeah. Um, and I love it. So I was about to ask you, which one do you like playing more, bass or drums? I'm going to say bass right now. I'm going to say bass. <laughs> a so lot of times it, I want to play drums. Flip, does it flip-flop? Yeah. It depends on what. It's a move. <laughs> It's really a movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when did you start playing, like, professionally? Professionally. Uh, like, what was the first time you got a gig to do something other than what you did with your family? Okay. Um, first person that really took me on the road like that would be, uh, I'm going to say Flossie. Shout out to Flossie. Yep. If you don't know, Flossie Cole, mm-hmm. bloody boy. So she was the first person to ask you to play. Um, I, I other had a, than other than the yeah local home, stuff like chill. that first gig that I did with her would have been I think New York yeah mm-hmm. so when she gives you the call you chill you got butterflies how you feeling butterflies <laughs> like really yeah I, I didn't know how to feel about it but you know that was my first experience so yeah I was scared. <laughs> I was scared. Hey, for one, Flossie ain't no joke, though. At all. No. Yo, she don't play no games. Mm-mm. So so you get the call. Is there rehearsal or anything? No. Whoa. No. Uh-uh. So you just got to like, what you do? Look at some videos or something? I knew her stuff, you oh, know. Oh, true. From just I being want, around. All, all, all day long, that's all I do is sit. Like, if I'm not going somewhere, yeah. or I'm sitting watching videos. I'm learning as much as yeah. I can. I observe, you know. Yeah. I feel like that's how I learn quickly in uh, some stance, you know. Yeah. So I already knew her stuff before. I had played drums one time, but bass was when I went to New York. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was that your first time out of the state? Out uh, of the state you live in? Uh, you know, I consider North North and South Carolina like the, the same, same thing. Yeah. yeah. So I would say yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, how was that for you to just like look around and be like, yo, I'm in New York? Um I was sleep most of the time. Ah sound like me. Hey, Morgan. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, she got me shamed. Talking about like uh as soon as they pull off, I'm out. Sleep. <laughs> Until I knew we're okay, I know we somewhere different. Yeah. And then I wake up because like you know you want to see what everything look like. You know we were in Rochester, so that's like not too yeah. far from like Niagara Falls and yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So up until so you get on stage, are you still nervous? Yes. So when did the nerves go away, or they uh, didn't? I don't think <laughs> they, they did. They went away until we got to the drive. Because <laughs> I was like. I don't want to miss up. I don't want to oh, miss up. Because yeah. that is important. I had to take my shoes off. So, like, a lot of times now, if you see me, yeah. I had to take them off. Yeah, because that's the way you get comfortable. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so, um, what up, y'all? I'm Rajay, and I want to say first, thank y'all for the support. Thank y'all for the love, and thank y'all for watching and listening to this podcast. We really don't take it for granted. Hey, if y'all want to continue to support us by spending y'all money, I got a way for y'all to do that. Y'all go to rajxshaw.com and pick up that Make It Happen hoodie today. Life be crazy, but we still got to do what? Make it happen. Gang. So, yeah, what's the thing that you learned with Flossie? Um. I think the biggest thing was watching, you know, the lead singer, like, Ooh. you know, what is she looking for? What yeah. What's the dynamics at this time? What did this song need? Or yeah. she want me to go hard? I'm going to go hard. If you yeah. want me to pull back, okay, I'll pull back. Yeah. You know, things like that. And she is like a spontaneous type of person. Mm-hmm. So, like, quartet can be, sometimes quartet can be, like, 
very pattern based. You kind of know what you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. But depending on who you're playing for, it could be like a whirlwind. Yeah, like, you don't know sometimes. You just don't yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. Up into this one, how old were you then? Uh, I want to say, I want to say that was after I graduated. Okay. So, so like 17? 17, 18. So, I have to go back and make sure because it might have been a long time. <laughs> so when uh, you're playing, at this point, are you confident in your playing? To a degree. Mm. To a degree. Um, I, by the time my dad taught me about, you know, not doing too much, you know, stay here, you know, I learned a lot about discipline. So I was very like, I'm a stick to, you know, what it's supposed to be. I'm not going to, you know, color outside the line. I'm going to just do what needs to be done. So it wasn't until, you know, I got older, like, you know, I listened to this person. I listened to that person, Mm -hmm. but you know, I, who am I, who, you know, What can I bring to what somebody has already established to the yes, sound? Yes. So I felt like being on the road and stuff helped me a lot with yes. it. So I'm going to ask you the big question. Okay, what is this? The big question is, uh-huh. you're a woman. Mm-hmm. At the time, you're a girl. Mm, right. Around all these dudes. Let's put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> How, what is that like? Like, are they like, Oh my gosh, she can play. Mm-hmm. Are they like, yo? I'm trying to holler at her. Everything, <laughs> everything you could possibly think of, for real. Uh, like I still get now. A lot of people think that I'm still 16. Yeah, so like, that little girl can play. Like, <laughs> no, I'm almost 30. Yeah. So then it changed. I'm like, hold up, now, you know. Yeah. It, so yeah. what is it like? Is it? Are you cool about it? Is it intimidating? Is it frustrating to be? a woman in a world where it's predominantly men as musicians, does it ever get to you? It can be overwhelming. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, That's just like uh, me growing up, Mm -hmm. you know, playing drums or whatever, you know, I walk in a building or a church, you know, with drumsticks or whatever, like, what's this little girl about to do? Shit, go sit down. (laughs) Go sit down. You know what? Okay, I get up. You know, you know, a lot of times, you know, somebody, oh, they about to get off in the stand here and watch this. Yeah. Okay, when I get up, everybody walks away. Whoa. You know. Yeah. So. So did that did that make you sad? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times I would, you know, I would go to my mom like, mama, I understand why people, you know, treat me, you know, this wow. way. But as soon as I get finished playing, it's a different story. At, it's going to be. It's a different story. So how did you, so mentally, did you ever get to the place where you said, I'm cool with it now. I'm cool with how they mm-hmm. respond to me. Mm-hmm. Cause I use it to my advantage. Ooh. Cause now you like a you like a silent killer at this point. Yeah, I don't say nothing. Yeah. Morgan is definitely a sniper. I ain't gonna <laughs> tell y'all no lie. It is it is real. So how do you na- so let's flip to the other side that's okay. not music. Okay. How do you like deal with dudes that's always trying to holler at you? A lot of times I just try not to respond. <laughs> You leave them on red? Yeah. <laughs> if you can see my Snapchat and everything right now. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Okay. So, Morgan is here. I got to give a disclaimer. Morgan is here because we're about to do a little thing together. So, y'all here in Oregon because we're trying to do two things at one time. Yeah. So, if you hear the organ, just disregard. <laughs> oh, because they really are playing the organ right now. Yeah. Okay. So, back to it. So, you just be like, you just curve them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of times. Not less it's somebody that approaches me the right, right way. way. You're right, yeah. right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, sweetheart, you have any questions? I want to make sure she don't got no questions. Okay. I'm trying to think. Because it, it's so many ways I can go. And a lot of times, just like what you were just saying, I have to, um, just that a lot of times I want to approach a person and be like, man, I really enjoy, you know, what you did you but can't even tell I can't, you can't yeah. compliment them I because then they it. go on. i can't do it so morgan that has to be tough it is it's like because you can admire somebody mm-hmm. and want to tell them that they killed it mm-hmm. and then they giving you the what's good man. <laughs> right right and i'm like that's not what i'm doing yeah. but, you know i sometimes you, you know i want to form a relationship with this person or this person because yeah. just a music connection but yes. then it yes then no. they always and the thing I ain't I ain't gonna put us out there too bad fellas but the quartet dudes can be a little bit out of pocket right 
Yeah. <laughs> Way out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So I want to ask you a question. Did you um? Do you enjoy playing other genres other than quartet music? Mm-hmm. You do. Mm-hmm. When did you get into like stuff other than quartet? It wasn't until uh, I got older. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to UNCP for okay. a year. You know, getting into jazz a lot, yeah. and then my first. My first real gig outside of quartet was with Jubu. Mm-hmm. They love Jubu. Yeah. Ah! Tell us about that. That was an experience because, you know, it was him and Calvin. Napper? Mm-hmm. Coon, shout out Coon. Yep. yep. Woo! And a guy on the organ named Sam. Yeah. So, you know, they sent, like, playlists, and I'm like, I've Because he was doing, like, it? Legally Blind stuff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I was like, I know some, but I've never actually played it. So I was like, how do I approach it? You know? Yeah. And then in the end, he still ended up doing, I've been here searching. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> right, right, right. So were you nervous doing that? Yeah. It's Jubu. Mm-hmm. Very nervous. So how did you get over the nerves? Uh, I think it just, while I was playing, I just yeah. felt it. And it just, you know, went away. So how was your practice process? Uh, a lot of times now, if I can get it in my ears, a lot of times I have to listen, listen, listen. By the time I pick it up, it's mostly already there, not unless I'm trying to, like, polish or yeah. something. So um, that's pretty much how it is right now. I, I do need to get back to practicing, practicing. But yeah, you know. but so another, I'm going to ask you another base question. How did you develop your sound and your style? Um, Like I said, you know, my brother... Robert, yeah, he was a lot of influence on me. You know, our guy down that way is Clark. Shout out Clark. Shout out Ryan Clark. That's my guy. That's the dude. So, yeah. you know, I took a lot of what their style was, and um, it just feels so good. Yeah. It, they're so warm, and they yes. heavy. Yes. Yes. So, there, there were a lot of influence on that, and I don't know. It's just... Want to be different? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I can't explain it. Yes, you are explaining it. I understand. And the thing the thing is, I'm going to make sure that y'all y'all follow her if y'all don't know who she is. Because she really can play. That's the crazy thing. So, when I hear you, like, it's crazy to me because it's one thing to be a good bass player. Mm-hmm. And it's another thing to be a good musician amongst musicians. Got it. Mm-hmm. So where does that come from where you say, you know what, it ain't just about me? Because I noticed that you pay attention to everything mm-hmm. and try to give the song what it needs. Mm-hmm. Where did the instinct to do that come from? Um, I think it comes from, you know, you're doing your thing, but you hear something else. Yeah. Understanding parts okay if i'm playing this you know what does what does the keys need to be doing or yeah how do we gel together along with the drummer yeah or you know things like that um i really like just like that i really want to work on producing so yeah learning things like that is you know helping me yeah learn the process absolutely absolutely anything else i'm trying to make sure because we vibing y'all we got to do this live but we vibing <laughs> Is there anything that you want to ask me? Because I know that you're trying to get like into like production and stuff like that. So oh, I wish you would have asked me that earlier. Ooh, that's on the spot. Uh, um, we'll come back there if I think. We'll come back. Right, cool. yeah, we'll come back there. I want to go back to um college. College. Okay. I want to understand what that life was like, and Ooh. also being a musician. So, being at UNCP, mm-hmm. number one, how did you navigate being a student? And a musician. It was definitely hard because, you know, I didn't go right after I graduated. So mm. I had already got on the road soon and I know, you know, I'm going to have to take a step back a little bit. Yeah. The focus. Yeah. And um, I did it for about a year, but a lot of people just started calling and calling and calling. I wanted to still get the experience. Yeah. So, um. I take what I learned from there and I try to apply it to what I'm doing today. Yeah. So even though I'm not at Pembroke, I'm 
Full Sail University. I'm on the music business program. Let's go. So what did you learn at Pembroke that you use today? Working working with, you know, we had to do like actual jazz combo thing. Yeah. So I kind of know how to read music. Ooh. So I really want to continue that and maybe be able to teach some of the yeah. guys, like some of the people I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it was fun. Yeah. I, I actually miss it a little bit. For real, yeah. Yeah. for real. Were, and were you like around a lot of musicians? Mm-hmm. So were there other female musicians? Yes. There were? Mm-hmm. Did they play your instrument or other instruments? She, The one that was in my jazz combo, she played piano. Were y'all close? Uh, we did have a little relationship. Yeah. She was like... I was so impressed yeah. how fluently she was able to read that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that was scary to yes. me. And she was way younger than I was. Yes. That's crazy. So I'm going to shift and talk. I'm going to go back and talk about your family. He's doing nothing. Yeah. He's doing Cause like you have like so tell me everybody that's in your family that plays and sings your siblings of course oh well, I only have one sister one sister mm-hmm. okay she sings okay okay so my mom and my dad play my granddad plays this is gonna be a lot go 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 all of my uncles pretty much my aunts so all of us were in a family band so that was all my aunts and uncles I was yeah. a musician my dad was a musician yeah. then on my mom's side. Uh, I have uncles that play, too. All of them pretty much went to the same church. So we were back and forth, you know, between yeah. learning, um, you know, different different styles. Like, my mom's side was more like real Southern gospel. Yeah. But then, like, my it's she has two sides, I want to say. Like, yeah. her mom and her dad. So then her mom's side was more like Southern gospel than... Her dad's side, that's where, you know, I learned about, like, the Cantons and, yeah. you know, like, Lee Williams and stuff so like what that. So Southern, what Southern gospel artists do you like? It's real, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. I, it's been a long time since I listened to. Yeah. Did um, y'all listen to the Crab Family? Yes. I love the Crab Family. The Crab Family then, was it. Hey, what's my other group with the old man, he, the OG, and then all the young the, all the young ones be under him, the husband and the wife? What y'all think of it? Oh, you said talking about they crazy. Um, I can't think of them. Oh, sisters, yeah, they are crazy. Mm-hmm. So you learning all of that family because it's crazy to have. That's what I want to ask you because it's crazy to be around musicians on your mom and dad's side. Mm-hmm. Did you ever feel any pressure from that? A little, mm-hmm. mm. yeah, because I think they noticed that I had a real hunger for it, mm-hmm. and um, my mom always knew that I was gonna go further than you know they had, yeah, and she didn't. She had no problem with that. Like, just say we had somewhere to go, or I had we had a weekend off. Somebody called, you know, Kim Morgan, come. Let her go. Yeah, and I really appreciate them for that because a lot of parents know they they're gonna stick. Right yeah, here. Yeah, yes. They're going to stay right here. But a lot of times you can't grow like that, being yeah, in the same environment. Yeah. So she always pushed me to, you know, do other things. That's cr- Shout out your mama. Mama, I love you. <laughs> so I want to ask you, I want to ask you something else. Did you, have you ever gotten to the point where you wanted to quit doing music? I think everybody has. Yeah. Sometimes it can be music itself or just life in general. Ooh, talk about that. Um, you know, there was a time where we, you know, a church that I was going to, a situation happened, you know, a lot of times you even want to quit going to church. Yeah. So that affected me, uh, a lot, but music was the thing that I had to fall back on regardless. That was really the only thing I had. Yeah. Even though, you know, I didn't want to do it. I had to. Yeah. So what was the thought process? So when that thing happened at church, where did your mind go? Um, is this still something that I still want to do? Yeah. You know, but I, I, 
I couldn't just think about myself. I had to think about, you know, at that time, you know, it wasn't as big as it was right now, but I was getting a lot of attention that I wasn't used to. So I was like, there are people really watching me. So if I give up, what's that going to look like to others? Mm. So you found the motivation to keep going because you knew you were becoming an inspiration to other people. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about that. Okay. Because... There are a lot of girls who aspire to do what you do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they feel like they can't because they don't see themselves represented. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Do do girls pay attention to you and want to do what you do? I get messages like all day long. All day. And see, I'm not a people person. <laughs> I tell anybody that. I'm not. Yeah. So that, that's what I'm saying. It's It gets overwhelming at times, but there's always like that one message that somebody right you like it touches you yeah somebody is really watching you and and you know they want to do what you do yeah sometimes you don't even want to do what you do <laughs> but they want to do what you do yeah so i yeah. you know i just have to keep going even through obstacles that you know i yeah. face and everything but so if you had to give a girl out there who watches you do what you do a piece of advice to keep going what would you tell them piece of advice uh don't let anybody um, uh, say that you can't do it. Don't be intimidated by no man, because God gave us the exact same music. It's just the gift of music has no gender at all. Okay, so don't don't give up. You can do it. You can go go beyond. You can go beyond what you expect. You can do. I know I have so far, and I and I know I still have places to go. Things that I want to do. And I know if I if I stick to it, I'm gonna get there one day. Yes. So don't give up. Tell them, don't give up. That is good, sweetheart. You got anything, Jess? Um, I do have, I do have a couple more questions. I want to go back to like elementary school age, yeah. and I want to ask you like you knew you loved music then, but. I, I know you say you're not a people person, mm-hmm. but if you can remember back that far, like, how was it like being in school and going to church and and um, trying to figure out what it is that you want to do? You like drums, but you see your dad playing bass. Mm-hmm. Like, what was that like? Okay. Oh, that's good. I like that. <laughs> so growing up, elementary school, middle school, you know, I'm a quartet head, so a lot of times people, you know, got their little MP3s and they listen to Lil Wayne and stuff like that. I'm listening to Harvey all day. <laughs> so it's like, who can relate to me? Yeah. I don't have nobody to relate to. Wow. So that sort of kind of affected that people person thing about me being a loner because wow. music was like everything. So, you know, like even in like, you know, I took – band and I was in choir and stuff like that so a lot of people like you know Morgan what you like to listen to and at the time I feel like there's a shift happening now but at the time you know quartet was it's just looked down on period yeah a lot of people still don't even know what that means yeah so I was like I was sort of kind of be like scared to even say yeah at at the time but like growing up now like I tell anybody if I got to play anything, that's what I want to play. Yeah. At the end of the day now, that's, you know. <laughs> yeah. That would be it. Yeah. So, yeah, like, music was just everywhere during that time. Like, I, I like, I had to take band. I had to take choir. Yeah. You know, I led a lot of the songs that we did for, like, the Christmas plays and everything so like that. So you sing, too? Mm-hmm. Do you like singing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But you would rather play. I'd rather play. Okay, let me ask you about, can you sing and play well? Yes. Because you've probably been doing that off the Drums rip. and singing is easy, but having to play bass or something? <laughs> What's Ooh. the difference? What makes bass harder? Because I'm trying to think of the notes. Yeah. And up here. <laughs> but drums, I'm just, yeah. you know, yeah. I think it's easier. Yeah, I love it. I think we good. I think we good. This was crazy, y'all. I didn't want this to be a quick one, but we got work to do. Hey, got to do what we got to do. Yo, I'm happy that you are here. 
I appreciate the opportunity. Hey, listen, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you doing this podcast. I hope y'all learned something from Morgan today. I hope y'all did too. <laughs> As y'all can tell, she is a jewel. She's extremely gifted and she's extremely humble. That's the only way to be. Yeah. Why is that the only way to be? You could be. You a girl out here killing it. Why not be arrogant? Ah, uh, I've seen too many people be arrogant fall so hard. Mm. So it's like, I don't even want to take that chance. Yeah. So staying low to the ground. So if something happened, you know, you ain't got that far to fall. Ooh. You know, ain't nowhere to go but up if you on the ground. Mm. Ooh, I ain't never said nothing like that before. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So we got to be out of here, but we love y'all. Peace. <laughs>